Hi, welcome to this video, which is the last video, the fourth one in the series on vectors for P1. In this video, we're going to be looking at the angle between two vectors. This is probably the most important concept. Uh, a lot of questions in the exam and a lot of marks are given for understanding this formula right here. So this is the formula, the most important thing that we're going to really break down and get good at doing. So on the left hand side here we've got something called the dot product or the scalar product, A dot B. Okay, so we've got bold here, so these are vectors. On the right hand side we've got the length of A and the length of B, those straight lines mean length and cos of the angle in between the vectors. So a lot of problems will ask you to find the angle between the vectors. And if we're given the two vectors, we can use this formula here to find that angle. Let's talk about what that scalar or dot product is. Very simply, it's just a way of kind of multiplying two vectors to get a scalar. So we've got two vectors here. The way that we get the scalar product is we just multiply P and S multiply Q and T, multiply R and U and add them together. That is the definition of what the scalar product is or the dot product. And as the name suggests, you get a scalar, an actual number doing that. Here's some of the properties. Uh, doesn't matter which order. You do it in A dot B and B dot A, you're going to get the same thing. K times the dot product would just be A times K times A dot K times B. A dot A is just the length of A squared. Think about that one. And A dot B plus C is kind of, it's also like when we expand brackets, works. And I dot I or J dot J or K dot K is one. So if you think of I, one zero zero dot one zero zero, you just get one. <clears throat> the last property is the most important, which is why I've highlighted it here. If the dot product is zero, that means that the two vectors are perpendicular. That's a really important one. If you get zero for the dot product, it means the two vectors are perpendicular. So here we've got two vectors, A and B, working out the dot product, pretty simple. Just line them up, five times three, plus minus two times minus one, plus one times minus four. Just be careful with the signs, maybe type it in your calculator, and the value you get is 13. Now, that does have a geometric interpretation, but it's a little bit tricky, so I've decided to not go into it here. All you need to know about the dot product is it's a number, it's going to help you find the angle between the two vectors. I can say that if it's positive, the angle is going to be acute. If it's negative, the angle that you're going to get is going to be obtuse. But the actual size of this, it doesn't really matter, it's just part of solving this problem up here. In this example, we've got two vectors, and we've got an unknown in one of the vectors. In O to N, the position vector of the point N, we've got these values of P, P is a constant, and we want to know what value of P makes these two vectors perpendicular. So we need to know that the dot product is zero when two vectors are perpendicular. So doing the dot product here, two times P plus three times minus two plus minus one times three P is zero. We do that and solve that equation, we get P is equal to negative 6. Okay, now we're going to put it all together to find the angle between two vectors. And this is the one you have to be really good at. So, got two vectors here, we want to find the angle. So, the dot product first, that's the left-hand side of the formula. We've done that a few times now. 1 times 4, negative 2 times 3, 2 times negative 12 gives us negative 26. So, my advice is, if you're given the vectors like this, write them out like this in component form. Okay, it just makes it easier, I think, to do the dot product. Okay, now we want the length of those vectors. Here we go. Length of P is 3, length of Q is 13. So those lengths work out nicely. And now we substitute everything into the formula. There's the dot product, there's the lengths times cos of the angle. So we divide both sides by 3 times 13. Work that out. Remember that gives you cos of the angle. So to get the angle, you've got to go shift cos on your calculator. It's 131.8 degrees. Now, if you think about two vectors intersecting or two lines intersecting, you could say that the angle between them is 180 minus that one as well. So if it does ask for the acute angle between the vectors, 180 minus that answer there will get you the correct answer. 
Now the good thing about this formula, as I've mentioned here, is that it works even if the vectors don't intersect each other. And that's called skew. So the two vectors, um, one might be, say, running across the uh, one side of a house, and you imagine the, the diagonal of the floor of the house. Okay, those two uh, vectors never intersect, but we can say that they still have an angle between them if we project one vector onto the other. Last example here on vectors. In the exam, you sometimes get one of these shapes. Here, they define what AJ, IJ and K are. They'll ask you to find how to get from D to C or G to E or something like that, and then ask to find the angle between the two vectors that you've found. So this is a classic question, just like you get in the exam. Uh, evaluate df dot dm and hence find the angle fdm. All right, just one thing to say about this. If you want to find the angle f d m and m is the midpoint of AB so m is down over here so f d m so you just got to just be careful that the vectors that you use are either two vectors going in towards D so f d and m d or it's d f and d m okay two vectors going away from the point so don't kind of mix them up where you have m to d and then D to F, all right? So you just want to have two vectors either both going away from that point or both coming in towards that point. So in this case, the two vectors we're looking at are DF and DM. So first we've got to work out what DF is. So that's 2i plus 6j. So to get from D to F, I'm going to go D to G, which is six lots of J, and then two lots of I across. It's important to write them in the right order here. Okay, so I always write mine down I, J, then K. So when you put it in this form here, you don't get the, the values mixed up when you put it into component form, like this. Okay, D to M, the midpoint down here. Okay, the midpoint of the side here. So, in terms of I, there's many different ways you can go about this. Because this is an isosceles trapezium, you've got two lots of I going across here, eight along the bottom, so you can see that you've got six left over at either six left over at the bottom. So you've got have, must have three lots of i from the middle where e is across to the top of a. So that must be three lots of i. So to go all the way across, we've got two plus three, five lots of i. Then in terms of j, we're going to the midpoint, so three lots of j. And then from here down is minus four lots of k. So that's how we get df and dm, and now we're just going to apply the formula. Do the dot product, we get 28 for the dot product. The length of df and the length of dm. df is root 40 and dm is root 50. Don't simplify these, don't use the uh, rounded answers to three sig figs, just carry those numbers there, the square root of 40 and the square root of 50. Substitute into the formula. Divide both sides by root 40 and root 50. Shift cos of that exact answer there, the answer is 51.2 degrees. So just want to emphasize again, don't round here. So this is exactly what you should be putting in in your calculator. We'll work this out and then go shift cos of the answer. If you do round these numbers here, you're likely to be out in the last decimal place there. Okay, that's the last video on vectors. Good luck.